halfway between Iceland and Norway in the North Atlantic Ocean, there's a group of 18 rocky volcanic islands. These are the Faroe Islands. They're isolated and spectacular. I've come to the capital Torshavn. I want to get a taste of what it's like living on this remote but lush archipelago. The mail service here plays a crucial role in island life, so my first stop is at the postal headquarters. Richard. Roker. Hi. Yeah, all the post comes in, the freight comes in, we sort it, we put it on route and deliver it to the different islands. The service delivers the post two days a week, using everything from scooters to boats and helicopters. Roker is taking me to the helipad, and I'm going to take a delivery to Michinis, the Faroe's westernmost island. How important has the post been to sort of keep people on the Faroe Islands? The postal services are uh, crucial for, uh, for any society. More and more of things we buy, they will be delivered by post. The population across the Faroes is about 51,000 people, but Michinis has just 14 full-time inhabitants. Thanks to the weather, for eight months of the year, pretty much the only way for residents to get on and off the island is by helicopter. Less than 15 minutes after taking off, we're on the ground at Michinis, unloading everything from bananas to washing machines and sheepdogs. Ronje Aydan Stovu has lived her whole life in Michinis. Hey, I'm Richard. Oh, hey, I'm Ronja. It's a bit like stepping back in time, this, yeah. is it? What do people do here? Like, apart from deliver the post? <laughs> Probably the best is like being a farmer. Right. Because there are a lot of sheep. And yeah. This delivery is for Oda Andreasen, who runs a local guest house. Hi there. Hi, Hi I'm Richard. Hi, I'm Oda. Although very charming, the village itself isn't no. the key attraction here. And after a quick cup of tea, Oda and I set off on Michinus's most renowned walk. It's to the island's lighthouse at the westernmost point of the Faroe Islands. I'm guessing it's not this good weather every day, right? No. Oda sets a fast pace, which never really lets up, but I do get the odd break. This is the most awe-inspiring place. It's exactly why I wanted to come here. The island's main draw card, its puffins, have mostly left for the year, but we still see plenty of sheep and gannets, as well as fulmars and guillemots. In peak season, up to 200 tourists a day come to the island. As for us, after three hours, we arrive at the lighthouse. It's been fantastic just being here on our own now. It's, um, yeah, it's hard to imagine if there were 200 people sort of swarming over here, but it's, it's a very special place. Yeah, I'll be happy with just maybe one boat a day. I would love to see Michinis like a, a, an island like the Galapagos Island. We're very limited people who come here just for the love of the birds. And then we will maybe limit the number of guests coming each day and give them a, a much better experience. While Oda is keen to avoid the over-tourism that's affecting neighbour Iceland, the tourists do provide an important financial supplement to the fishing and farming industries here. Tourism is growing now, so who knows if tourism also will be a new way of making this island survive with the population in the future. With the light fading, it's time to head back. It's a beautiful evening, but actually, tomorrow's weather forecast isn't looking great, which might make the trip back to Torshavn a little interesting. Next morning, and the weather is indeed quickly changing for the worse, Today, the only way off the island is by boat, and not unusually, departure has been brought forward a few hours. If you want a sign of why we had to leave Michinus in such a hurry, that's why the weather's changed completely. The clouds and the rain have come in, and the sea has got very choppy. So, good that we left when we did. But in a place where it can rain up to 300 days a year, the scenery has a stark beauty, no matter what the weather. It's an exhilarating boat ride. I have to say, I'm quite pleased to make it back to Torshavn in one piece to wrap up what's been a truly memorable couple of days. Ah, good to be back on dry land.